What's up my producer friends, I'm David with AnotherMonsterProductions.com. In this video, I'm gonna show you everything you need to know about Patcher. It's an extremely powerful stock FL Studio plugin that comes with all versions of FL Studio, but it can be a little overwhelming at first and kind of confusing. So in this video, hopefully I clear up any confusion about this plugin you may have. Let's get into it. Okay, so here I am inside FL Studio 20. If you're brand new to music production in FL Studio, I'm gonna cover a couple things that you need to know real quick. So first of all, FL Studio has a lot of stock plugins inside FL Studio that are gonna come with the program that allow you to do a lot of really cool stuff. Now, some of these plugins are generator plugins, which means that they actually create sound so these are going to be your synthesizers, various other plugins that may try and emulate various instruments, stuff like that. And inside FL Studio, if we go into this tab here, which is our channel rack, this is where we're going to be able to load generator plugins by clicking this button down here and then picking whichever generator plugin we want. Now, FL Studio also has effects plugins, and these particular plugins don't actually generate any sound, but they allow us to edit the sounds that we've created and add all sorts of cool effects on them. So an example of an effect would be like an EQ or a reverb or a delay, something like that. So if I go into my mixer, which you can get by clicking this button up here, we can root various generators, various synths, drums, any sort of audio into our mixer, and then we can use these slots here to add various effects onto it. Now, the cool thing about Patcher is that Patcher can be a generator plugin or an effects plugin, and so you can actually load Patcher into the mixer or into the channel rack as I kind of showed you here by clicking this button and then going down to Patcher. So this is what Patcher looks like when we create a generator version of Patcher. This looks almost identical to the effects version. The only difference is the fact that we have this green button here, which basically signifies that it's gonna be MIDI. And so this green button needs to be attached to some sort of generator plugin in order for us to generate sound in Patcher. So if I wanna add some sort of generator plugin, I can right click anywhere on Patcher, go to add plugin, and then I have all my generator plugins over here on the left-hand side, and I have all my effects plugins over here on the right-hand side. So we can go ahead and pick a random generator plugin. I'm gonna do Flex, which is a newer plugin that FL Studio recently released. And now you can see that these lines appear. So I've got the green line going into Flex, and then the yellow line going to FL Studio. And that means that now if I hit our MIDI keyboard or our actual keyboard, we should be hearing something. So we've got some audio going on here now. If I double click on Flex, it actually loads up the plugin itself. I can go down here to Tags, and let's just go ahead and click Lead, and we'll go to All, and we'll search here for uh, some sort of big synth lead. Why not? We'll go with this crazy thing. So now I have a couple options here. I can go ahead and add another generator plugin and we can layer that together with this sound or I can go ahead and start adding some effects and editing the sound that I already have. So I think what I wanna do first is go ahead and right click and we're gonna add another generator plugin. So I'm gonna to go to GMS and I've actually got some presets here in GMS. So if I double click, I can load up GMS. We can go up here to presets and I'll go to my dance essentials and we'll try big room lead. And by the way, I'll be sure to leave a link in the description of this video to all of my GMS presets. If you wanna download them, it'll be a free download for you. So now let's take a listen to these sounds layered together. Okay, cool. So if we wanna mix these together a little bit better, the way we would do that is this thing here. So this controls the amount of volume going into FL Studio from the plugin. So I can bring it all the way down like this. Here, I'll bring this one down too. And then we have nothing. So I can bring it in slowly. Uh, the midway point is 100% and then it goes all the way up to 200% as well. So we'll leave this one at about 100% and then we'll start bringing in this layered one.
So I just brought that up to about 55% there and I kind of like the way that that's mixed together. So now if I wanted to, I could add more generators on here and just layer a ton of sounds, as many as I wanted to. That's one cool thing about Patcher is you have literally unlimited amounts of plugins that you can add on here and it is resizable. So, you know, if you run out of room, you can always resize it a little bit. But I think what I want to do for the sake of this tutorial is go ahead and add some effects on this and start processing it a little bit. So I have a couple options here. One option is that I could process these synths separately from each other. So I could have like an EQ on this one and then an EQ on this one doing something completely different. So in this way, Patcher gives us tons of control to really get in here and tweak the sound exactly how we want it to be. So how I would go about doing that, as you notice uh, right now, both of these are automatically rooted to FL Studio here. If I click on this button and just sort of drag this off and then let go, that'll go away and I can do that with that one too. And then I can go ahead and add an effects plugin here. We'll just add a Fruity Reverb 2 on here and now I'll drag this kind of here. And now I can attach this to the Reverb 2 and this to the out. And if I wanted to do different processing with the GMS, then I could add whatever effects I wanted in this chain here and then bring that out there. But actually for this example, I wanna go ahead and have the reverb on both of these. So I'm gonna root that to the reverb and then the reverb is going out. So now I can double click on the reverb. Uh, we can go ahead and go to the venue. Nice big reverb there. And I can even bring the decay up a little bit on here. So that's actually kind of a lot of reverb. So what I can do here is create a button that actually controls the amount of reverb on the surface of this plugin. So this is where the surface comes in. So far we've been only in the map section. If we click the surface section, it's just blank. But if we click this add button here, we have all these different things that we can add. So I can add a knob, I can add a slider, a button, and various other things on here. So I'm just gonna add a knob. Uh, we're just gonna pick a random knob and I'm gonna drag this to make it a little bit bigger and I'll just put it right here in the middle. And as long as this orange wrench tool is highlighted, then we're in editing mode. So I can go ahead and rename this. Uh, I'll rename this reverb. And while I'm in editing mode, I can make it bigger. I can move this around. And then when I wanna get rid of editing mode, I just click this and now we can actually use our knob. So now I need to link the reverb to the actual surface. So if I go back into my map, now you'll notice I have this little red dot which appeared. And if you look up in the top left-hand corner in FL Studio, it says one reverb. And the more knobs, sliders, faders, different parameters that I add on the surface control here, is gonna make more red dots show up here. And when you hover over them, they'll show you exactly what each dot is linked to on the surface. So now I can go ahead and click this red dot and drag this red point onto my uh, reverb too, which is going to bring up all these different options. And so now we have the ability to link that knob on our surface to any one of these parameters inside of our reverb. And some of these plugins have tons of parameters, so it can get a little bit overwhelming here. I'm pretty sure that what we're gonna wanna link it to is the wet level. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then I'll go back into my surface. And right now it should be at zero. But as I bring it up, And then of course we got super reverb all the way up, but I can go somewhere in the middle. Cool, so obviously we don't have a whole lot going on in our map. I don't wanna spend any more time on this patcher right now, but just know that the possibilities are pretty much unlimited with this plugin. If you wanna learn a little bit more about how the surface works, I have done tutorials in the past where I've built patcher plugins from scratch. There's one in particular where I built a trap bell from scratch, and I'll be sure to leave a link in the description of the video if you guys wanna check that out, and I'll try and have it pop up on the screen now as well. So that'll show you a little bit more about how the surface works and some of the cool features that you can add onto the surface. Cool, so let's go ahead and route this to a free mixer track. So now I have this patcher synth that we just made rooted to a free mixer track, and I'm gonna go ahead and add another patcher on top of it as an effects. So you may notice that when we play something, uh, nothing's actually happening, and that's because by default, when this loads up, these things aren't actually linked to each other. So we have to link these to each other if we wanted anything to actually happen. <laughs> So now we have signal. And one big reason why a lot of people like using patcher for effects is to do parallel processing. So let's go ahead and add 
Uh, let's do a fruity delay three here. And right now it's not linked to anything. We still have our from FL Studio going to FL Studio. And I'm gonna bring another one going into fruity delay three and then going out. So now we should be able to hear the fruity delay three. Now I can actually blend this fruity delay three in with the original because we have both signals going. So if I double click on my fruity delay three, uh, I can maybe tweak these settings a little bit. Well, maybe we'll add a ping pong delay. So let's try adding a distortion on here as well. I'm just gonna add a fruity fast distortion and I'm gonna root this to its own separate area. So this is sort of a more straightforward, easier way of doing parallel processing than having to root it to a separate channel within the mixer and going that route. Another option that I do sometimes uh, instead of parallel processing is just use the mix level here. This is a similar thing to parallel processing. I'm actually controlling the dry wet of the signal. So in this case, if I brought this to like 50%, then we'd have 50% of the wet signal of this patcher coming through and 50% of the dry signal coming through. But anyway, back to patcher. The effects version of patcher is pretty much the same as the generator version. We've gone over the surface control and we've gone over most of the features within this plugin. Just like with most other plugins in FL Studio, we do have some other sort of options here. We can click this button to bring up a couple tools. We can click this button here to bring up a menu with some various options so we can save a preset uh, or we can load presets here. And one thing that may actually be kind of a good idea to figure out all the different things that you can do with patcher is to load up some of these different presets sets and take a look. So let's see what 1K delay looks like. Uh, so our surface control looks like this, and then we can go into the map and we can see all the different plugins that they have going on with here. So let's see what this sounds like. Anyway, you get the idea. Thanks for watching the video guys. If you liked it, be sure to hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Don't forget to hit the bell notification. That's gonna let you know anytime I release videos in the future. Right now I'm doing tutorials about once a week and those usually come out on Friday or Saturday. So keep an eye out for that. If you have any questions about anything or tutorial requests, feel free to hit me up on Instagram at anothermonster1. Also, if you feel like you're really struggling with music production, sound design, anything in between, and you feel like you just need a little bit of extra help, I am doing one one-on-one -on -one private lessons, which you can sign up for on my website at anothermonsterproductions.com. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description of this video if you guys want to sign up for that. And while you're there, be sure to take advantage of the free stuff I'm giving away in the description of this video as well. I've got a sample pack and an ebook, which you can download for free. You just need to enter your email address and I'll send that stuff over to you. And as always, I will see you in the next video.